Hello and welcome to my channel. This is the second installment of a mini-series on uh, how to use Reaper for EDM track production. In this part we will focus on creating a basic drum loop, uh, adding a percussion loop and a bass line. And uh, in the next video we will add vocals and a lead pad and uh, other sounds. We will see how it goes. I hope you will enjoy it and let's get into it. So hello, as I said, I'm sitting in front of my PC, uh, Reaper is opened up and uh, I will try to make a basic loop and then we will progress further from this. I don't know what kind of track this will be, if it's going to be house, tech house, uh, techno, euro, whatever, disco house. <laughs> I don't have any idea right now, but we will see uh, what comes out of it. Okay, so in the last video we went through the basic setup and then we basically ended up with this. Several channels are um, ready to be used. There are like two cent channels and then uh, drum channels and baseline channel. So first I will try to make a kick drum, snare and hi-hat. Then I will add a percussion loop and bass line. So let's get into it. Uh, in case of kick drum I will be using Native Instruments battery and uh, Vengeance uh, sample pack. Uh, I think that it's Vengeance house loops, something, something, something. I've been having this pack uh, for mm, years and years. You know, I, I think it was released somewhere in 2000 five or six but um, when it comes to like uh, price uh, performance ratio this is the absolute classic i basically think that they uh, took uh, samples from um, recordings uh, that's why there were some uh, legal clashes over this so uh, i think that they had stopped distributing some of the packs because someone got angry that the pack uh, contained his uh, samples uh, but, um, you know, uh, dance music in general is based on samples and those samples come from somewhere. <laughs> and, and I think that um, if you use it in the way that you basically do not copy the original uh, track or song, use certain elements, uh, you should be more or less okay. That's, that's what Vengeance uh, guys did when, uh, when designing the pack. So, yeah. Okay, so... I will load um, a couple of samples into uh, battery. This should be house track, so um, I will try to go for rather for a soft kick, something softer uh, for the start, and um, I will fine tune it somehow. And now we will layer drums. Uh, this is very easy in battery. You basically combine uh, several cells into uh, one um, kick drum. Practice it's done by mapping the uh, node to cell. So C1 node plays cell A1. <laughs> Hello and I'm sorry for this little intervention, but I realized that I covered the uh, tuned and uh, assigned to node battery in battery by my own picture. <laughs> so. So in battery, the assignment of individual cells to individual nodes is done. Done this way, you will see it now. And uh, the tuning of the drums in, is done by pressing this button. Yeah, this is what I forgot, sorry. We will assign other cells to node C1, it's done by this. I'm just dragging down, you know, and now C1 plays two kicks, now three kicks. And then uh, what's great about battery is that uh, you are able to tune the drums uh, by using this button. And you also are able to put um, individual volume envelopes to each of the drums, which is also great. It's all in one tool, which works really well for this purpose. And then you are adjusting levels of individual cells or samples. Sounds reasonably good. And I will continue the same way uh, when it comes to snare and hi-hats. That's pretty much it. Okay, so I ended up uh, with something like this so far. And I will try to add a percussion loop um, to accompany the basic uh, drums. So we will look into percussion loop. I will do it the way that I will open the via editor and I will try to add a loop. So it's quite nice. I will see. Okay, so you will only drag and drop the percussion loop into into Reaper. 
Then if you double click it, um, you see that the base tempo for the loop is 128. This is how the sample is made. So we will change the source BPM to 128. It's done by this button. You, you will click set 128. Click OK. Click OK. So OK, I added some uh, more percussion to the loop. Sounds like this. Now I will try to tune individual drums so I like the so I like the loop as a whole. Maybe I will make it better, maybe I will make it worse, I don't know. <laughs> but I will try it uh, and let's see what it does. When it comes to bassline, mm, I will try to fit the key of the drums. The drums are tuned a certain way and not all keys will fit the drums. So for this purpose I have already Diva here. And now I will add a plugin which is called Chords. And this is absolutely amazing plugin because it remaps anything you uh, play uh, on the keyboard into certain key. It's something like Snap to Scale um, you may find in other DAWs and hardware instruments. It's great that it's absolutely free and it works flawlessly. So now I will try to uh, go through several scales and I will see what fits uh, this track the best. It sounds rather like a house track, so <laughs> it would be something around, I don't know, A, a minor, mm, I don't know, E minor, something like that. If it doesn't fit the track, I will change it so we will see what comes out of it. And the Hortz plugin works the way that uh, you basically set the scale here. It operates in two modes. Uh, it, either play, it either plays the, the chord. So if I hit anything on the keyboard, it plays uh, C major chord now. But uh, if I want to play just uh, a scale, then I will select it here. Scale only. I will try minor. You hit apply and now we are playing C minor. Okay, so we will see what fits the track. Okay, so I will try A minor, we will see what it does. I think that we will stick to A minor. Now I will record the loop uh, using the keyboard. Uh, I will do it the way that I will select this loop. Hit this button and this button. Now uh, Reaper took four takes. I will save them all and now I will um, choose one of them. I have a shortcut defined for this. I think that's Alt Shift T. Yeah. Now I double click it. We will quantize it. You will just you just hit Q and it quantizes everything to 132s, uh, but I think this will not be enough, so I will change it to 16th. Quantize to 16th. Okay, and the end result, um, I fine-tuned the loop a bit and I also tuned um, the open hi-hat 909 so it fits the A minor scale a bit better and then I uh, add some variation into the bass line so the whole percussion bass line loop sounds like this. Okay, I fine-tuned uh, the drums a bit more, <laughs> especially the kick, I didn't like the individual samples, so this is what I ended up with. I used the clubby, clubby, whatever samples, you know, and I think that they hit a bit harder, and I tuned them a bit, uh, so this is the final result now.
So before we move on in the next episode, I will make a small recap. I will just summarize what we did and how we did it. If you look uh, at uh, the structure of the truck right now, uh, you see that the reverb send and saturation send are all uh, blank at this uh, stage which means that uh, everything what you hear is dry. I don't use any reverbs, uh, saturation and no EQ. The reason is that if it sounds good in dry state, it will sound even better in uh, wet state <laughs> when the effects are applied. So if I go through individual tracks and instruments, uh, the kick drum played through native instruments, battery, there are three samples. All three samples are mapped to note C1 and uh, they are tuned a bit so they fit the A minor scale of the whole track. Kick drum in MIDI editor looks like this, just a standard MIDI. There's no swing or anything applied to kick drum and no variation in uh, velocities. Then we look at the, let's say, percussion, percussion loop track. This one is a bit uh, more rich, let's say. Each note is mapped into one individual cell in battery. There's some variation in velocities and there is also a little swing which is applied through humanized button. I think that I applied these settings to some of these uh, percussion instruments. So there is a slight change in timing and velocity to and 5%. So it makes it a bit more interesting and there is some little micro variation in the sound. When we look uh, in the snare battery container, it uh, contains these four individual samples. I didn't tune any of them because they fit the track right away, so there was no need to do anything in this regard. In a similar fashion, there is a hi-hat MIDI track. This is very neatly organized loop section because you see just the MIDI notes and it's very easy to work with them because everything is mapped into battery in very comprehensive fashion. Also individual samples. In uh, some of them I applied volume envelope. Then I fine tuned some of those samples a bit so it fits the A minor scale. Then what I did with the percussion loop, I stretched the loop so it fits the tempo of 125 BPM which is the track tempo. Then baseline, uh, baseline is Diva. This is the configuration I use. It's uh, some weird combination of, I don't know what's this, like some Moogish stuff, you know, it looks pretty old fashioned. Diva is basically a, an endless uh, combination of oscillator section, filter section and envelope section, and then some modulation. This is a basic uh, preset, but I fine tune the preset a bit. And uh, Diva plays A minor through Hortz plugin. Okay, so this sums it up and uh, that's what we did. So this is enough for this video. I think that we went through all uh, important parts and sections and I hope you have a good overview of what it takes to go this far in uh, track production. And in the next video we will focus on adding vocals. I will use supplies for this and then we will add additional instruments. So stay tuned and see you next time.